Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Tulsa, University of Tulsa Vice President and Director of Athletics, Dr. Derek Gregg, Site Media Coordinator Don Tumkowski, and the entire Tulsa staff, welcome to the Box Center in the first and second rounds of the 2017 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Today's pre-game day interviews will feature all eight schools assigned to this venue. And we have a few housekeeping details that we need to keep the proceedings moving in a professional manner. Number one, of course, always please silence your cell phones. Number two, each time we introduce a new dais, please identify yourself and your affiliation the first time you ask a question to the head coach or the student athletes. Number three, please wait until one of our two mic holders, one's in the back, one's in the front here, are with you before you ask a question so everyone can hear the question to get into the rotation. Please get their attention or mine. If you have a follow-up question, remind the mic holder so that person stays with you for the follow-up. Number four is very important. There is no flash photography allowed nor recording of any kind, including cell phones and tablet use. No recordings of any kind. Today's sessions are 15 minutes long for each group of student athletes and each head coach. There'll be 15 minute breaks between each school. All press conferences are transcribed by ASAP Sports. We do have satellite and downlink coordinates for you. For today, satellite AMC 15 slash K20C as in cat. AMC-15 slash K20C. The downlink is 12104.50H. The downlink is 12104.50H. The first session is 11.20 to 11.35 with the Mexico State student athletes, Matt Taylor and Ian Baker. The Aggies are number 14 seed in the East region. They are the Western Athletic Conference tournament champions. They will play number three Baylor in Friday's first game at 11.40. Their head coach is Paul Weir and he will follow the student athletes to the dais. And as mentioned, the Aggies are here, Matt Taylor and Ian Baker, and we will go right to questions. Start right here, second row, Dawn, thank you. Mark Rudy from the Las Cruces Sun News. Uh, Ian, you're pretty much the only one on this team who's played <coughs> meaningful minutes in an NCAA tournament game. Uh, how key is your leadership gonna be for a lot of the guys, maybe this be their first time playing in a tournament game? Um, I think it'll be very key. Uh, I think my job is just to keep my team calm and keep them composed and, um, you know, give their, bef give their best effort. Matt, kind of to piggyback off that, um, I know you have played in a tournament game before too, but um, you know how key has Ian's leadership been for you guys this year, and how key will that be in this game? Uh, it's been huge, obviously, all year. You know, he's been a guy that we've we've looked to, and we've we've fed off of him. Uh, we've always said, you know, our PG is going to take us as far as we go, um, and so just being, you know, he, he, him being our team leader and stuff like that, it'll definitely help out there uh, when we go through stuff that you know some of us haven't been through. Left hand side, gentlemen. John Warner, Waco Tribune Neuro. This is for Ian. Um, what kind of challenges does Baylor present? Um, do they look anything like anybody y'all played this year? Or? 
Um, I'm not too sure if they look like anybody we played this year, but um, <clears throat> as far as I know, I know they're a big team. They're long. Uh, they're a great rebounding team, especially on the offensive rebounds. So I would say our job going into this game is to keep them off the offensive rebounds and um, do our best to make them adjust to us. Andy Morgan, uh, NBC in El Paso. Matt, what does this team, your team, do really well um, that gives you guys a chance to win this game? Um, well, I think uh, as a team, we share the ball well. We play together. We play for each other. Um, you know, obviously, we can shoot it a little bit, stuff like that offensively. And then defensively, you know, we're pretty good as well. So um, between sharing the ball and then just trying to uh, pick up our pressure on defense and, you know, be active and stuff like that, I think those are our strong points. For Ian, Ian, this is uh, John Morris from Baylor Radio. A lot of times in the NCAA tournament, you're seeing a team you haven't seen before except on tape. You guys have played against Baylor, not this year, but the last two years. Uh, does that familiarity mean anything going into this game? Um, not too much. And uh, I would say for us, you know, our playing style was totally different from last year, maybe actually the last two years. So uh, it's, uh, it's pretty much different. For either Ian or Matt, like obviously with the this um, their size advantage, is this a game where you guys at the guard position are probably going to have to help out in the rebounding, especially with how good offensive rebounding team they are? Matt, take that one, please. Uh, yeah, I believe um, obviously that our guards will have to come down and help chip out, you know, get a body on extra guys um, because they're such a great rebounding team, especially on the offensive glass. So yeah, we should uh, look to you know go help out and stuff like that. Both for Ian and Matt, um, head coach Paul Weir in his first season obviously been around the program for, for quite a while. Uh, what has changed maybe this tournament trip as opposed to others and what kind of influence has he had on this program? Ian first please, then Matt. Um, I think uh, Coach P. Weir, he just has us in a, a right mindset. I think the last couple times that we came here, we wasn't as focused. We didn't pay as much to a detail like we should have. and. Uh, that's pretty much been, you know, what Pete has done for us all year. Just kept us focused, um, always worried about the next game. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, um, I just feel like, you know, since he's been here, he's kind of changed the culture of the program uh, in the short time that he has. And, uh, you know, just helping us uh, understand that, you know, it's still a basketball game and it, it's how you prepare versus, uh, you know, the other distractions that may, you know, come up as you're playing the game and stuff like that. So, you know, just core values that he's taught us and that uh, we've basically uh, adopted and, uh, you know, we try and, you know, use amongst each other and we try and uh, say the same things to each other behind closed doors. Uh, both for Ian and Matt, I have a question for you. Just in regards to being able to overcome that 13-point deficit in the WAC title game, what kind of momentum does that bring into this game? Matt, you're going first this time. Um, I wouldn't say it brings any momentum. You know, I think that that was obviously a different game, so it's a completely different challenge uh, ahead of us. But um, it's just a testament of how we've played all year, which is together. And, you know, we always try and fight no matter what the situation is. So that's all we try to do there. And to, to piggyback on what Matt said, like, I don't think it brings much momentum, but it just shows that um, no matter how the game is going, we have some fight in our team, and we're a resilient team. So uh, I think that is something good that we can carry over into this game. For Ian, uh, you guys have been a pretty good three-point shooting team this year. Obviously, going up against a very good defensive three-point shooting team that has length. What do you guys have to do to try and, and get some shots off, get some good looks? Is it just kind of taking the opportunities as you get them? Um, <clears throat> I think you know just sharing the ball around, getting some mo some movement on offense, forcing the defense to move around some, and um, not forcing it, not taking the first look, but you know, like I said, moving the ball around and you know getting the easy shots. In the back, Don. Uh, for Ian, uh, senior year, and I guess for, for Matt as well, both of you guys being uh, in your last year with the program, uh, what are you guys doing to make sure that you kind of soak this experience in and, and kind of make the most of it? Matt first, then Ian. Uh, you know, just try and have fun, try and embrace the, the little things. You know, not too many teams have the privilege of, of, of being here, obviously. And so, 
you know, we try not to take anything for granted, uh, try and have fun with each other, uh, you know, just be together, uh, embrace the moments. And like I said, just not try not to take anything too serious. Obviously, still focus on what you need to focus on. But, you know, have fun while you're here, because like I said, it's, it's a privilege. Yeah, and uh, just basically enjoy the moment. We know this is a once in a lifetime thing. Not many teams get to be in this situation. And, uh, you know, just try to get the team to stay calm and take it one day at a time. And, um, you know, we're happy that we're here, but uh, don't be satisfied. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. You are excused and best of luck tomorrow. Head coach Paul Weir is here. We're going to ask him to open up with a statement about being in Tulsa, maybe about his opponent, and then we'll go to questions. Paul, please. Um, yeah, obviously Baylor is a uh, terrific basketball team, uh, as much size as we've probably seen this year. Very good offensive rebounding team, very good post-feed offense team. So we have our work cut out for us as far as you know, mitigating that size as best we can. Uh, we've been a, an energy team all year, an effort team all year. We're really hopeful that, you know, whatever we do tactically, um, we can also supplement with incredible energy and effort and kind of overcome whatever kind of deficiencies may be there. So that's really the gist of what we're trying to do. Uh, excited to be here, obviously, in this city and, and in this forum, uh, but also hopeful that, you know, what we've done to get here, we'll continue to be able to do on a bigger stage so people can kind of respect and appreciate the team that we have. Questions? Right in back of you. Andy Morgan, NBC in El Paso. Coach Weir, um, your first season as a head coach, but you've been through this experience as an assistant. What did you learn through those experiences as an assistant here in the tournament that uh, you're kind of carrying over now as a head coach? Uh, you know, to be totally honest with you, I've told a few people this. Uh, being an assistant coach does not really prepare you to be a head coach very well. You know, when you're assistant coach, you think you have all the answers. You think you know what it's like. Uh, you think you'll make all the right decisions. And then when you become a head coach, you realize it's brand new territory. So this year has been a, a you know, very uh, fruitful journey for me, just learning uh, a lot of different things um, and kind of going through a lot of these experiences. Do you take notes? Do you have things? We did some different things at our conference tournament we haven't done in the past. We did some subtle things here differently preparing for this that maybe we haven't done in the past. But, you know, I'm, I'm going into this with, with a lot of lessons to be learned and things to kind of grow from as well. Um, and I don't want to sit here and pretend that I have all the answers of how things are going to be different. Yeah, uh, Cliff Brunt, Associated Press. Uh, how does having players from so many different places across the world uh, impact the team and improve the experience? You know, that, that's, a, that's a great question. I think basketball as a whole is, is becoming so much more diverse. I think when you look at the, the uh, diversity of the NBA, I think college athletics is really quickly coming behind. Um, the, the, the growth of not just the Canadian players, but all these different countries has really made basketball a global game. 
Um, its expansion in so many other countries around the world inevitably is that's where basketball is headed. So I think college athletics is a little bit further behind getting there. But I think as as years pass and, and generations kind of come through, it'll just becoming more diverse every year. So I think it's a great experience for these basketball players. A lot of the good ones get to go play professionally, which means they're going to be in another country anyways. Um, and it's I think it's been it's been very fruitful for us as well. Jeff Grammer, Albuquerque Journal. Paul, you talked about Motley earlier in the week. Um, you've been able to watch a lot more film since we spoke earlier in the week. Anything um, Any you Ken see? Palm stats or no? <laughs> no Ken Palm okay. stats today for you. Um, but what do you, now that you've watched even more film about Motley, and any ideas now on what you're going to do to contain a guy like him? Yeah, I mean, you know, Jeff, uh, probably the best post player we've seen this year was Tim Williams, you know, and uh, he, and he's a terrific basketball player. You know, I know he had kind of some injuries and some different things happen, but we had to play him twice. So, you know, we've gone into games really trying to take away post players and, and putting game plans in place to hopefully do that. So that's really what we spent a lot of time on. It's not necessarily just him. They're big, they're strong, they like to play through the post. And we've had to really spend a lot of time on our post defense, whether it's post feeds or when it gets there on the catch. Is, is there similarities to Tim other than just being a, the best post maybe you saw earlier this year? Or is Motley not as much of a back to the basket like, like Tim? Yeah, is? no, there, there are some differences as far as their, their particular characteristics, but it's just as far as the emphasis on a really good post player, that's probably the last time we've had to do it. Mark Rody, Las Cruces Sun News. Um, Paul, uh, while you guys have been here five of the past six years, Ian's pretty much the only one on your team who's played really meaningful minutes in a tournament game. You guys have leaned on his leadership all year. How much is his leadership going to be key in this game for you guys? You know, it's one game, so unfortunately, we really don't have a lot of time for it. Uh, you know, we kind of went through that a little bit in the WAC tournament. We kind of went through it all year. It was really the first time a lot of these guys, even though the returners are on our roster, had been through things. So, you know, we're going to have to grow up in a hurry tomorrow, and we don't really have time for some of those other guys to get through whatever it is like we did in the WAC tournament. Left-hand side, Paul. Uh, John Warner, Waco Tribune Hero. Uh, Baylor has lost uh, lower seeded teams the last two years. Do you use that as an example to your team, or you just focus more on, on this season? Yeah, to be totally honest with you, we're just preparing for them the best we can. We really don't get into a lot of those, those other things. Uh, Jack Nixon, Aggie Sports Network. Uh, throughout the year, your team has had a, the only game is the next game mentality. How do you think that's helped you get ready for this sort of a situation, please? Yeah, I mean, that was another thing that I kind of adopted that I didn't really know where it was going to go at the beginning of the year. We didn't talk about beating a rival or winning a WAC tournament or winning a WAC championship or whatever it may be. We just literally talked about that day and the next game. And that's how we've approached every single day all year. Uh, and then once the Bakersfield game ended, it was immediately we're getting ready for the next game and, and preparing for that. So, you know, I, I can't even tell you who we may play. All I've been focused on is, is Baylor, and that's all we're working on right now. Um, and I guess at the end of the season, we'll reflect and look back and, you know, maybe tinker some things going forward. But the one day at a time mentality is something we've really done, and, and it's gotten us to this point. So we'll take it as far as it goes. Luke Lid in ABC7 El Paso. Talk about how you hope to counter Baylor's height and length with possibly your, the team's speed and athleticism. Yeah, I mean, that's really going to be, I think, the, the gist of the entire game, you know, who's, who's able to kind of um, implement their style better. Uh, we obviously want to use our, our style of play, our effort, our energy. We've kind of hung our hat on that all year long, and that's going to hopefully negate whatever advantages they may ha have for size and, and even on the glass. So. Um, if we're able to do it the way we want to do it, I think we'll be, we'll be pleased with how the game unfolds. And if we can't, then I think they will be. Uh, you guys obviously no stranger to the NCAA tournament. Do you see this as an opportunity to kind of put New Mexico State and your brand of basketball on the map? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, we've been trying to do that all year long. You know, we went into the season with, with a lot of people doubting us, uh, losing Pascal. Uh, CBS picked us 163rd and spelled my name wrong. So we've had our doubters all year long um, as far as what this team can and can't do. 
And, you know, we beat a Power 5 team for the first time in nearly 25 years. We beat our rival for the first time at home in nearly 10 years. We did that with a rookie head coach and one senior. We lost our leading score to injury and obviously Pascal to the draft. So we've dealt with people thinking we can't accomplish things all year long. We've really never listened to any of them. The guys in the locker room and us, we believe in each other. And tomorrow when the ball goes up, we're just going to fight to the death and give it everything we got. Down here on the left, Paul. <clears throat> Coach Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Uh, the familiarity factor, you guys didn't play them this year, but you had played them the two previous years. Does that affect your preparation? Does, it, it, does that matter in a tournament game like this? You know, we, we have not uh, taken really any time this year to worry about previous seasons or previous games. It's really been about making this team our team and our journey together. Um, so I, there may be for someone like Ian, who's kind of been on the court with them and stuff like that, but this team is so new. Uh, we have a lot of new faces, and even the returning faces were never really part of our rotation in years past. So we really haven't spent any time talking about what happened in previous games. It's about looking at our film and our preparation this year with this team, you know, in comparison to what Baylor's doing this year with this team. Anything else for the head coach? Second row. Paul, you guys have been a pretty good three-point shooting team this year. You talked a little about this week that they're a very good defensive three-point shooting team or three-point, you know, good at defending the three-pointer um, with their size and length. What do you guys try and do to get, you know, good looks at the basket? Is just kind of, you know, getting your opportunities at the three-point shot? Jeff Grammer's Ken Palm account would say we're not a great three-point shooting team. But... Um, we do have, we, we're, we're, you know, in that light, we're both uh, incredibly similar. I touched on that this week. Um, you know, they have a top 25 three-point defense. We have a top 25 three-point defense. They have a top 25 offensive rebounding percentage. We have a top 25 offensive rebounding percentage. They do a really good job of slowing the game defensively and getting long possessions. We do the exact same thing. Uh, they've had issues creating turnovers, and at times we have as well. So we're remarkably similar in how we execute our, our uh, various kind of styles of play. We just go about it in, in much different ways. But it, there's no mistake about it. We're going to have to make some shots. And, and I think the lulls we've had, we've just had issues with shot selection. And Braxton and Ian are, are two guys that have to make sure they take the right shots. Uh, our shot chart when we've kind of struggled in, in games offensively is when Ian and Braxton just shoot much more than everybody else. And we've thrived ourselves on balance all year. And they have to be patient and let the game come to them. I thought Ian and Braxton really in the WAC tournament kind of epitomized who we are and what we've tried to be about all year. They were just patient, patient, patient. And you know, a lot of their, and, and really, Braxton never even really got a shot off. Uh, but Ian made a lot of his shots late. And they didn't go out really just trying to like force the game onto them. They let the game kind of come to them. So as long as we have really good balance and we stay patient offensively, I feel good about our ability to at least take the right shots. And we don't talk about whether a shot goes in or not. We just talk about the quality of the shot, both defensively and offensively. If they take the shots we want them to take and they happen to go in, then you know you just kind of pat them on the butt and say good job. But if if, if we take the shots that they want that they want us to take, then that's not something we want, whether they go in or not. On the corner. Paul, I, I know you've been doing a ton of radio this week, um, TV spots, a lot of media, kind of breaks the routine when you, when you come to the NCAA tournament. I've listened in on some of those radio interviews, and, and it seems like a lot of the questions with you are about you know, master's degrees, about first year coach, about being from Canada, not much about the team. Sure. Anything surprise you, um, or are you kind of expecting this time of year, not a lot of people outside of the New Mexico stamp um, really know much about your team? Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's expected. Uh, it's our team's job to maybe hope those people notice those things. Uh, I, I feel bad that only two guys get to come up. I feel bad that these guys all can't be here with me. We've done this thing from day one as a team, um, and hopefully we'll finish this thing as a team. It's uh, it, and, and understandably so, uh, but hopefully now it's our opportunity to show everyone what our team's about and, and how, how it is we got here when the odds were completely stacked against us. Anything else for the head coach of the Aggies? All right. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Best thank of you. luck. Thank you. Thank you.
University of Miami is next at 12.05.
1205 segment has the, the uh, hurricanes of University of Miami. They are number eight in the Midwest region. They are out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. They will play number nine, Michigan State, in Friday's second game. The head coach is Jim Laranega. But with us first are the student athletes of the Hurricanes, Davon Reed and Kamari Murphy. We'll open up for questions. Cody Stavenhagen, Tulsa World. Uh, Kamari, how's it feel being back in Oklahoma? Um, I didn't think I would be back anytime soon, but um, only thing I can think about is uh, the good times I had at Oklahoma State. Um, we played in Tulsa a couple times, um, but I just remember the, the cold weather like it is, like it is now, and then in the summers, very hot breeze and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it feels good to be back. Um, Thought a lot about my old friends and stuff at Oklahoma State, but um, I'm more focused on the, on the games we have now. But definitely good memories here. Left hand side, gentlemen. For either of you guys, what have been your initial impressions from watching film on Michigan State? What stands out about them? Dave on, please. Uh, Michigan State is um, historically a great program. Uh, led by a great head coach in Tom Mizzo. Um, they like to rebound the ball. They like to run, them, run the ball up the floor in five seconds to get a quick layup. And they have a ton of set plays on offense. So um, we'll have to do a good job of taking care of all those things and keeping them off the foul line because they like to get fouled as well. Yeah, for either of you guys, um, how much does it help knowing that you guys beat North Carolina and Duke heading to this tournament? Kamari first, please, and then we'll go to Davon. Um, just playing in our conference, um, we have one, uh, the best conference in college basketball, so um, I feel like every game prepared us for what we could possibly face. And, um, you know, Michigan State, like Davon said, uh, five-second layups, um, like the rebound, um, similar to North Carolina, um, leading rebounding team in our, in our conference, um, love to offensive rebound. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely one of the best teams in the five-second layup. So um, I think we're more than prepared for Michigan State. Um, but they have also, like Davon says, uh, a lot of set plays and um, key players they like to go to. So uh, we had the key in on that. Um, we had a couple practice practices to prepare for that as well. So um, I think these these last couple of days uh, we just freshening up on their plays and their tendencies, and I think we will be ready to go on on Friday night. Um, I think, like Kamari said, playing in the ACC, we've been battle tested all year. Um, the league, you know, through and through is um, tough from night in and night out. So um, I think we're ready to play against anybody in the tournament. And, you know, like, uh, like Kamari said, they're very similar to a Carolina systematic and rebounding. So I think, you know, that experience uh, we'll be able to use in the tournament. Right there behind you. Uh, Kamari, you have been to four NCAA tournaments. Talk about how this is this is cool kind of being at your fourth one. Um, um, I'm kind of like the, the, the vet on the team. So um, now, um, you know, I just have to uh, mold these young guys that we have now and just um, kind of tell them what it's going to be like, the atmosphere, what it's going to be like. Um, you know, although we're in Tulsa, we might not have a lot of youth fans. So we got to stick together and, and not come unglued. Um, and then Coach L also did a, a good job trying to explain what it's going to be like as far as um, officiating. Um, you know, teams are going to go on runs in the tournament as well. So, you know, everybody's going to bring their best game in the tournament. So we just got to stick together. Um, me and Reed, as, as the captain, is going to keep them um, together and, 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 and do what Coach L planned. But, um, I think my four years of experience is, is definitely going to show um, on the court, off the court, and just being a leader. Anything else for the student athletes of Miami? OK, gentlemen, thank you very much. You're excused, and best of luck. Head coach will be up at 12.20.
Okay. Thank you.
head coach of the Hurricanes is with us, Jim Laranaga. We're going to ask him to make a statement about his team being here in Tulsa, and then we'll go to questions. Jim, please. Well, we're very excited uh, to be here in Tulsa and uh, competing in the NCAA tournament against uh, the Michigan State Spartans. We have the utmost respect for Tom Izzo, his staff, and their program. Uh, uh, Tom and I have had a, a very good relationship since my days at Bowling Green, and uh, my team is looking forward to competing against them. Questions? Right here, second row. Jim, can you kind of expand on that relationship with Tom a little bit? I mean, obviously, Stan Heath came from your program to his program, and just how much you knew him coming up through the ranks as an assistant coach. I took the head coaching job at Bowling Green State University in 1986, and uh, Tom was an assistant at Michigan State at the time. And my first encounter uh, with them was when we identified a player named Steve Smith who was out of Detroit, and uh, my staff and I watched him play, and we started recruiting him very, very hard. And um, we went to Steve's uh, home in September of that, uh, that uh, senior year of his. And uh, at that point in time, uh, we offered Steve a scholarship, and he told me he was going to visit, that he was very seriously considering Bowling Green unless. I said, what do you mean, Steve, unless what? He said, unless Michigan State offers me a scholarship because they're my favorite, Magic Johnson's my hero, and if they, if they offer me, that's where I'm going. And uh, I don't know if, if uh, Tom would repeat the story like that because I think he saw Steve play that next weekend, and Steve had like 47 points, and he went to, to Steve's home by himself without Coach Heathcote, offered him a scholarship, and I believe, if I heard the story correctly, uh, Steve Smith committed to him on the spot. But that was our, our first encounter. And then our teams played. Uh, my Bowling Green team played against uh, uh, Michigan State several times. Um, and then when Tom was named the, the head coach, I just was so impressed with the job he did immediately. He, he just took them to a whole nother level. And then for those of you who don't know, Stan Heath was my assistant coach at the time. Uh, Tom hired him. Uh, back in 19, I believe that was 94 or 95. And then five years later, they won the national championship together. And uh, that um, got Stan's head coaching career started. He jumped from Michigan State to Kent State. So known Tom uh, an awfully long time and have the utmost respect for him. Jim, I think most, most people know that 2006 run in uh, that you had started with the win against Michigan State. I'm wondering if that ever comes up very often when you, if you, when you talk to Tom, if that's something you like to remind him about here and there. Well, Tom and I have never discussed it, but the media tends to bring it up a lot. So, but that's in the past. It has nothing to do with, with uh, tomorrow night's game. It's Michigan State against the University of Miami, and, and both of us, I think, uh, Recognize we have young clubs. We have a lot of young guys making major contributions. And uh, I'm sure we're both hopeful that those young guys will, will play up to their capability. Chris Solari, Detroit Free Press. Uh, Jim, you talked about the five-second layup uh, that Michigan State likes to get out and push the ball. Uh, how do you defend that? Uh, with, with your guards is it simply getting back in transition or is it something that you have to do in the front court right away? Well, first of all, you have to recognize that Michigan State is a highly disciplined, highly organized machine. Uh, when Before our season ever began and we started talking about how, the importance of getting back defensively against any opponent, we use as an example that the University of North Carolina and Michigan State are the two best college basketball programs in the country at scoring within the first five seconds of their possession, whether you score on them or not. So if they rebound it, they can score on you within five seconds. If you score on them, they can still score on you. And my coaching staff it wants me to refer to it now as the three-second layup because they're scoring that fast. And with a point guard like, like Tum Tum, 
he can get out and push the ball and get them either a layup or an open three that quickly. So you have to practice that, not for Michigan State, but for every opponent. But you have to be at your best if you're facing North Carolina or Michigan State uh, because they are the two best programs at it. Jim, obviously you guys both have a lot of youth, but you, you have a couple veteran guys that you can kind of lean on a little bit. Michigan State hasn't had that much this year. How, how much of a benefit has it been when you are trying to bring along those young guys that you have a couple veterans at least to kind of, kind of I, lead I, them through? I, <clears throat> excuse me. I think it's the reason we're here. Davon Reed and Kamari Murphy are, are two of the best leaders I've ever had, and they've done it by example, by how hard they practice every day, the consistency of their effort and execution. Uh, they're both tremendous defensive players. Davon Reed was voted to the uh, all-defensive team in the ACC, and I believe Kamari Murphy uh, should have been the defensive player of the year. That's how good I think he is defensively. Uh, he didn't even make the, the all-defensive team. But in my estimation, we wouldn't be where we are and our young players would not have developed the way they have if it weren't, weren't for those two guys and the message they sent from day one about the importance of defending and rebounding. Right here in the center. Janine Edwards, ESPN. Hi, Coach. Hi, Great to see you again. Um, you just mentioned some of the nuances between Carolina and Michigan State. What are some of the other nuances that playing in the ACC will help you with in preparation for tomorrow night's game? Well, what we like to do is make comparisons so that our players have more of a familiarity with the opponent. So, for example, when we showed him videotape of uh, Lou Rawls, Naren Jr., and told him that his, his nickname is, is Tum Tum, we showed, they sh we showed him videotape of him and then compared him to John Gillen of, of Syracuse. Because the first time we played Syracuse, uh, John torched us with his speed and quickness and ability to score in the open court. And then we talked about uh, Miles Bridges and the, and the great player he is and compared, ca compared him to a Jason Tatum of Duke of how well he can score from three-point range, but what a great athlete he is uh, and, and can score in a variety of ways. And then we compared um, Nick Ward to a uh, Kennedy Meeks, who Kennedy Meeks in, in the ACC is one of the premier uh, low post players, a tremendous offensive rebounder, a tremendous jump hook shooter. Kennedy is right-handed, Nick Ward is left-handed, but there's a lot of similarities. Jim, you guys have some size on your roster. Michigan State right now doesn't do the injuries and some of that. Uh, is that a situation where you can exploit it with the guys that you typically use in your rotation, or do you feel like you can go a little deeper maybe with your big guys in this game? That's an interesting question. Uh, we're at our best when, when we get multiple guys playing very well, not, not just our, our three upperclassmen, Jaquan Newton, Davon Reed, and Kamari Murphy. Those guys have been consistent scoring the ball pretty, pretty regularly. But we're at our best when we get a major contribution from a, an Anthony Lawrence, a uh, Bruce Brown, Dewan Yule, a Buka Zundu, guys like that, when they're, when they're scoring double figures or having a big rebound game, that really speaks volumes for how well we can play. On the left-hand side, thank you. Coach, you mentioned player comparisons and brought up uh, Tum Tum Nairn. There's also freshman point guard Cassius Winston. I was wondering if he stood out to you and if you had a player comparison for him. Yeah, Cassius Winston to us is a very high Q basketball player. Really knows how to play, knows how to pass, knows how to get a shot for himself. But he's, he's most dangerous at, at uh, finding an opponent and getting the other guys going. And... Quite honestly, there, there are not a lot of players in the country that, that play at that high level of, of basketball IQ. So we, we had a hard time finding a, a good comparison uh, at the college level. So we used uh, an old NBA player, now retired, named Steve Nash, and said how important it is 
uh, when Steve Nash played for you to be ready because he could find the open man uh, with brilliance. And, and we find Cassius Winston to be that kind of point guard. Back row, Jim. Yeah, Coach, you talked about youth a lot already, but uh, have you encountered a team so far this year or, or in your career that has so many young guys playing so many minutes like MSU does? And what challenges, if any, does uh, a team with so much youth and inexperience uh, provide in tournament time? It's interesting you would ask that because uh, one of the teams in our league that was picked preseason number one is now a number two seed. They rely very heavily on freshmen, guys like Frank Jackson and Jason Tatum and those, those Duke Blue Devils. So we, we know that, that youth and the inexperience plays a role very early in the season, and it takes a while for the young guys to kind of uh, get their feet on the ground and know what they should be uh, doing and what they should av avoid doing. But uh, by this time of the year, those freshmen are at least sophomores uh, and have played at a very, very high level for a long time. So uh, I, I don't think there's an advantage on either, either side of the rosters. Anything else for the head coach of Miami? Yes, second row. Coach, what surprised or impressed you most about Bruce Brown's ability to get 25 and 30 points against Duke and Carolina? Well, when we, when we recruited Bruce, uh, the reason we, we loved him so much is how hard he plays. He just competes every single game we watched him in AAU ball. And he's done that throughout this season. From his very first day in an official practice, he went really hard. And he shows that competitive spirit uh, at such a high level that there is no ceiling for him. You know, he can just keep getting better and better. And in games, big games like tomorrow night, you know, I, I don't know what he's going to do, but I know he's going to play really, really hard. He might score a bunch of points or he might get a bunch of assists or a bunch of rebounds, a bunch of blocked shots or steals. He just plays really hard at the game. And uh, against Duke and Carolina, his shot was falling for him, so he kept shooting. His teammates found like he had the hot hand, so they kept giving him the ball. And uh, he's, he's had the, the unique responsibility of playing the one, two, and three throughout a game, not just the season, but in every game. He doesn't start at the one, but we, we move him to the one. He starts at the three and then moves to the two, then to the one, then back to the three. And his matchups change constantly. So from a defensive standpoint, he just likes the challenge of whoever I have to guard, I'm, I'm going to try to do the best I can. Final question for this segment right here. Jim, you, uh, I think I blanked out on that one. Um, the, uh, uh, let me think about this for a half second again. I totally blanked out. Um, uh, yeah, I'm good. You got nothing? All right. That's the way I do. That's what I do at timeout sometimes. <laughs> timeout, hey, coach. What are we running? You're, you're I don't gonna, know. You're gonna laugh when you figure out what I wanted to ask. Well, what I wanted to ask you about was Miles Bridges. You know, a guy that you really can't forget. Um, when you look at a guy like that, how difficult is it to vent, to defend him? And do you do you have a good enough base with what you saw in the ACC to to really defend him at an optimal level? Well, Miles Bridges is an incredible athlete. And one of the things about Michigan State as a team is they run so well. And Miles Bridges is such a great athlete, he is very, very hard to guard in the open court, whether he's out in front and trying to dunk on you, or he's trailing the break and shooting a three. Or you close out to take away the three, and he drives it and takes it right to the rim. When a player is so multidimensional, you've got to figure out not how to stop him, but how to at least slow him down. Try to uh, uh, limit the number of opportunities he gets to make threes. Limit the number of times he beats you off the dribble. Limit the number of times he crashes the offensive boards and tip dunks on you. So we're going to have to do a great job both individually and collectively. There's not just one guy that can stop him. 
Thank you, Coach. Best of luck. Thank you. Yes, I see that over here.
The Baylor University Bears are next. They are the number three seed in the East region. They are out of the Big 12 Conference, and they will play number 14, New Mexico State, in Friday's first game at 11.40. Head coach is Scott Drew. The student athletes representing the Bears are Jonathan Motley and Ishmael Wainwright. And we are open for questions for the two young men. John Warner, Oiko Tribune Herald. Uh, Ish, uh, obviously, uh, you guys want to get past the first round. How, how much motivation is that uh, after what's happened the last two years? What happened the last two years? Uh, now, nah, um, we just, I mean, we haven't really talked about it. Uh, we know what we need to do. Um, coaches broke down everything, and so um, just moving on. This is a new season. Uh, new Mexico State's a great team. Uh, they're led by a great point guard. Uh, coach is amazing, too. So, I mean, we know what's at stake, and we know what we need to do. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Jonathan, uh, their coach talked about it, that the teams are very similar in terms of, if you look at stats in particular, both good offensive rebounding teams, um, both good three-point three shooting defense. How much of an emphasis will it be to keep them off? off the offensive glass. Obviously, they're going to try to do the same thing to you, but how much of that will be an emphasis for you guys? Um, well, we're just going to go out there and do what we do. Uh, we know we're a great rebounding team, and um, we're a lot bigger than most people, so uh, we're just going to go out there and oppose our will and uh, do what we have to do. I have two questions on the right-hand side. Go, please. Jeff Grammer, Albuquerque Journal. Uh, for either one of you, before you guys started breaking down film this week and before you saw the name pop up Sunday, Either one of you guys know anything about New Mexico State? We played against them the last couple oh, of years. Couple yeah. years. Um, and I also have family in Albuquerque, so I, I know a little about Albuquerque. So. <laughs> what, what family in Albuquerque? My grandmother used to stay there. She passed away. Uh, I have cousins that stay there, too. Um, Still there? Yes. So I knew a little bit, I, you know, a little bit. But uh, we played against them the past few years, um, the bigs, you know, uh, Bular and all them. Been playing against them for years. Um, but we know, know a little bit about them. A lot now. Yeah. Andy Morgan, NBC in El Paso. Jonathan, um, New Mexico State, uh, an undersized team by all, by all measures. Um, does this feel like a matchup that you can expose? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, we're just going to try to get the ball to the paint as much as possible. And uh, that's what we do. Uh, and then we just play out, of, play out of there from there. And uh, usually most teams double team me, so I just got to find ways to uh, get kick out threes for guys and just exploit those matchups and try to get as many one-on-one -on -one touches as I can. And uh, then we're going to be all right. I don't think they understand. Question here. Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News. For, for Jonathan, I was talking to Ish in Kansas City. He was talking about, you know, how you're, you know, talked about your body, how you're almost like a King Kong or Godzilla type monster, I think was the phrase he used. Just talk about your evolution since you arrived on campus physically from that standpoint, how much different you are, how you got that way. Uh, well, just giving most of the credit to Coach Charlie, uh, our strength coach. Um, he's worked with me so much uh, during my redshirt year. Um, we found days to lift weights like every day. Any chance we got, we lifted weights. And uh, and I gained about 20, 30 pounds of muscle, sitting at about 240 right now, uh, about 6% body fat, you know. So it's just credit to hard work, you know. Uh, anything can be done when you work hard, so. Right there. Jonathan Ben Baby from the uh, Dallas Morning News as well. Uh, uh, you and Dre went to North Shore. Um, do y'all talk about possibly uh, meeting up? And do y'all talk about the uh, the possibility of playing in the second round, being North Shore guys? Um, yeah, man, it'd be good to see them, uh, of course. Uh, just, but we got to take it one game at a time. You know, we got to get past New Mexico State first, and that's what we're focusing on. But yeah, uh, it'd be awesome to see my old teammate again. Uh, we text all the time, blah blah blah. We got a group message and. Uh, we keep in contact, been keeping in contact for years, so uh, it would be awesome to meet up with him for sure. Right here. Right there.
Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News. Again, question for, uh, for Ish. The fact that you guys have played New Mexico State the past two seasons, you know, some of the personnel is the same, even though they've got a new coach who was on their staff. How much of that is an advantage come tournament time, having at least some knowledge of your opponent? I mean, because they can break down, uh, coaches broke down what they do against what they did against our zone last time we played last year, um, and we can break down what they didn't do, and so we can, like he said, we can you know take advantage of that, um, and that's really about it. I mean. We played against them. We could watch the whole game, and I know they're going to put in new wrinkles and stuff. We're going to put in new wrinkles, but. Yeah. Left hand side, gentlemen. Uh, Ish, you mentioned on Sunday after the uh, selections were announced that you guys need to get back to playing the way y'all did at the start of the season. What, what does that kind of entail? What, what do y'all need to do? Play with a smile on our faces. Um, it was a time where. We looked at it more of like a little, like a job, and we wasn't having fun. But now, I mean, we're back to having fun. We're back to having, uh, being our goofy selves, uh, joking around a lot. And that's a good thing, just seeing the young guys just step up. And, you know, they actually said that, too. We need to start having more fun. And lately, we've been having a lot of fun. So, I mean, that's, that's going to carry over to the court. So you'll see a lot of smiles and a lot of, a lot of you know, laughs on the court. Jonathan I, Jonathan, I was talking to uh, Coach Drew, said one of the things that he saw from the start of the season to maybe when you struggled a little bit was as a team, when you were more aggressive, when you were drawing fouls, when you're going to the free throw line, that's when you guys were playing your best. Does that kind of fall on the inside guys then to be a little more aggressive in, in the tournament to draw those fouls and, and make things happen? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, our teammates look to us, me and Joe and uh, TJ, to do things, and uh, that's kind of the way we play our game, uh, inside out. And uh, if we're not being aggressive, it kind of just throws, us, throws off the whole floor of the game because our guards are not getting kick out threes and open shots. And so, um, yeah, we're definitely going to do a better job of being aggressive and getting to the free throw line more. And uh, usually when we get a lot more easy paint touches and uh, free throw shots and things like that, we're usually more successful. So. Um, we've definitely been working on that and uh, making sure we're going to carry that out. Left-hand side. Ish, I think you said that Jonathan was one of the first people you saw when you first got to campus. Talk about what he looked like then compared to now. This isn't the, this isn't the Jonathan Motley. That's not him. He was 40 pounds lighter, uh, skinny like bones and everything, and just – had a little, you know, not a lot of hair, but had a little bit of hair. But that's not the John Motley. This is the more mature, uh, a bucket Motley. <laughs> He's a monster, like I told you in Kansas City. My fault. I told you in Kansas City, this is a monster. Uh, Godzilla King Kong, that doesn't even compare to him. It's a, it's a monster. He's a monster, so it's just different. And I'm proud of him. Anything else for the student athletes of Baylor? Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Best of luck. Scott Drew will be next at 105.
Head coach of Baylor, Scott Drew, is with us. We're going to ask him to make a statement about his club coming to Tulsa, and then we'll go with questions. Scott, please. Well, we're extremely excited to be close to home, number one. Number two, um, after uh, uh, a couple days of uh, uh, guys being able to rest and recover, um, they got, some, uh, uh, got a better bounce in their step. They're excited, and it's the best time of year, so uh, hopefully we can uh, play our best basketball. Start right there on the right, and then we'll go here, number two. Uh, Jeff Grammer, Albuquerque Journal. I know you played them twice in recent years, but <clears throat> Paul was an assistant on that team. Mm -hmm. Now he's the head coach. What's different, though, about what Paul's doing as opposed to what Marvin was doing the last two times you played them? Well, both are similar from the standpoint they win a lot, <laughs> and both of them done a great job. Uh, I think uh, Paul is uh, uh, playing a smaller lineup. Uh, doing a great job in uh, uh, especially transition. They, they really push the ball. Um, but I, I see uh, more similarities than differences, and that's a positive because it's an outstanding program, and they got a great culture there. John Warner, Waco Tribune. Scott, uh, Ish said uh, the coaches, I guess nobody's really been talking about the previous two years in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. Do you all just feel like that's just not necessary anymore? No, everybody kind of knows what ha happened? <laughs> Well, I think uh, um, uh, the good thing is you have players that have been through it, so they know uh, um, the positives and negatives. Uh, Ish has explained the excitement of going to Sweet 16. The guys that have been in Elite Eights, they, they obviously explained uh, uh, the excitement that involved uh, uh, that. As far as um, I think the best thing about uh, Ish as a leader is he does a great job in making sure that everybody just understands the importance of the moment. And with our only, him being our only senior on the team, it's really important you have a great leader like that who can convey because at the end of the day, I, I'm convinced 18 to 22 year olds listen to their peers more than they do their coaches or anybody else. So um, I think it's really important to have that leadership. And uh, with us, we know uh, uh, in 40 minutes, anything can happen. Um, doesn't matter what you're seated, uh, uh, what you're ranked, what people say. Uh, in 40 minutes, uh, uh, that's the beauty of uh, March Madness. Uh, it's not a best out of seven series. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Scott, you've dealt with it before in terms of guys leaving. How do you handle that process? And, and was there maybe even talks with Jonathan last mm -hmm. year in terms of him possibly going out? Well, first, first of all, uh, every player that gets into college uh, uh, that I've coached uh, would like to play in the NBA. And most of them uh, uh, would like that to be sooner rather than later. So uh, w as, a, as a coach, our job is to help them reach their goals. Um, at the same time, we try to make sure that the, uh, they never make bad decisions because once you leave, you can't come back. Uh, so with, with all our players, we're in constant talk with them whenever uh, they're in a situation where uh, there is a possibility that they could go. And the first and foremost thing is to gather the information and make sure they protect their eligibility so that uh, uh, they have options. And then when they, when they have the information, it's up to them and their family to make the decision. In the back. Ian Eklund, AP Broadcast. Coach, did you approach this year different at all, like um, between the conference tournament and coming here? No. Um, I think uh, uh, all year long, want the done is, is, is basically uh, keep things pretty consistent, uh, level-headed, uh, control what we can control. And with that, I think, uh, uh, again, we've had great chemistry. You've had great leadership from, from Ish Wainwright. Uh, we've gotten banged up. We've gotten a chance to get healthy, so uh, uh, hopefully we can finish uh, playing our best basketball the rest of the year. Coach Janine Edwards, ESPN. Mm -hmm. um, Ish was talking about they are playing, having fun, having more fun, mm -hmm. playing with smiles on their faces like they did at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. How do you see that manifest itself in their play on the court? What mm -hmm. changes when mm -hmm. they play like that? Well, when, when you're not playing tight and you're not playing uh, uh, um, uh, 
Tim, and I think some of it, uh, it, the grind of the season wears you out. You have 18 conference games. You play the SEC Challenge. That's 19 straight games, no off nights. And especially when you get banged up or you can't play as well, it's not as fun. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's just coming off an ankle sprain from, him, from himself and the fact that he's healthy now and uh, it's a lot more enjoyable to dunk rather than lay it up or get it blocked. So uh, I think when, we're, when any team's at their best, they're having fun playing and not, not too uptight to where they can't perform to their best. Yeah, two right here. Go. Scott, you've had a little chance to look at New Mexico State film the last few days. What do you see from them? A team very similar to uh, a lot of teams we play from the standpoint, uh, a lot of um, athleticism. They got great length. Um, they play up and down. Uh, very good on ball screens. Uh, it's a team that uh, uh, we've played the last couple of years, but uh, their, their style is a little bit different with their personnel, and uh, uh, Coach Ware has done a good job adapting to that. Um, at the end of the day, I think there's familiarity, though, because their length and their athleticism is, is kind of similar to um, teams we've faced, which uh, should make it fun for the, for the fans to watch. Scott, you mentioned Manu. Can you give us an update on him? And What's, what's the key to the offense being more productive than it has been recently? And maybe it's just as simple as getting outside of the Big 12 Conference. <laughs> well, I think you look at uh, Kansas State and their last couple games, the points they scored, and then the first game they played in the NCAA tournament, just when you're, when you're not playing the same people for the third time and second time that no, I mean, it seems like in the Big 12, that second or third time, if your player's in the wrong position, they actually tell you, hey, you're supposed to be here on that play. You know, so it just makes it real tough to, tough to execute score. Uh, and you know their tendencies. Uh, it's one thing to watch on film. It's another thing where he got me with that move. He got me with that move. He ain't getting me the third time with that move. So um, that, that's, the, that's, that's the beauty of the NCAA tournament. Everybody gets a, fre a brush of fresh, fresh air. Um, you're different venue, different excitement and uh, playing different teams. With Manu, uh, the big thing is we've been able to practice with him. And it's really hard if you don't practice with someone and you put them in games and then now he's not as aggressive or he's not as, as uh, uh, in rhythm with things or in sync with things or the teammates, he might be, but the other teammates aren't with him. So uh, we all know the importance of practice. Now I think players would all prefer to just show up for games, but uh, uh, we all do know the importance of practice. Coach, how have the early exits the last couple of years impacted maybe the way you're approaching mm -hmm. or the way you want your guys to approach mm -hmm. this tournament? You know, mm -hmm. sort of take us through that process if that's had any impact at all on the way you're dealing mm -hmm. with this year. What well, I think every experience has an impact, but the best thing is when it's personal experience, I think, especially from the player standpoints, the ones that um, were around last year, the year before, um, they understand the importance of each and every game. And just like the, uh, uh, when we went to the two Elite Eights, went to the Sweet 16, won the NIT championship, I mean, that's the beauty of March. Nothing works every time. And uh, we've had a lot of success, um, and we've lost some games. So, um, again, we're going to control what we can control, and uh, hopefully that's enough. Anything else for the head coach of the Baylor Bears? Okay, coach, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Best of luck. SMU student athletes up next at 135.
the Southern, the Southern Methodist University Mustangs are next. They are number six seeded in the East region. They are the American Athletic Conference regular season and tournament champions. They will play number 11, the seed USC in Friday's second game. Their head coach is Tim Jankovic. Before Tim comes up, we'll have Sterling Brown and Ben Moore representing the student body. And we will be finished with these two interviews at exactly 2.04 due to satellite time. Welcome, gentlemen. Sterling Brown and Ben Moore, we'll open up for questions. Hey guys, uh, Reese Graham, SMU The Daily Campus. Um, you've played these guys before. It was much earlier in the season. Played them in November. Your team is completely different now. From a, comfort, from a comfortability standpoint, how, how are you guys feeling going into this matchup? Sterling, you first, then we'll go to Ben. Uh, we're feeling pretty confident. You know, um, We've came a long way since the first matchup. Uh, I feel like we got better in all areas, and uh, we're just ready, ready for the game. Uh, you know, the coaching staff has done a great job of getting us prepared. You know, we know USC is a great team, but, you know, we feel like we're going to do well against them. We done already? <laughs> no, we're not, we're not done yet. He's probably got a follow-up. <laughs> um, given the new makeup at with, of your team and the new offensive schemes that you've brought to the table since transitioning after Harry Froling and Tom uh, Wilson uh, transferred. What, what new challenges are being presented to you with your new style of play? And what, what do you feel that you don't have to worry about anymore? Uh, ben, you first this time, then we'll go to Sterling. Um, well, we feel like we're very versatile on offense, so that's a big plus for us um, as far as Worrying about different things goes. We, we're not as big as most teams, but we feel like we can use that as an advantage. So, you know, it's that. I mean, yeah, like you said, we, uh, we're pretty versatile. And um, I mean, all, all we got to really worry about is just staying out of foul trouble since we, you know, limited with guys. That's pretty much it. Right down here in the second row. Phil Mayer from Pony Stampede. Does the fact that you guys lost to USC earlier this year give you any extra motivation? Sterling? I mean, yeah, it definitely does. You know, um, you getting a chance to play them again, you know, that's, that's something special, especially in this tournament. And just being in this tournament for us is, you know, uh, special. So, I mean, we got a lot, you know, behind us. Uh, We're going to be ready for the game tomorrow. Uh, just to build off what he says, yeah, we're, we're excited to play them again. We feel like we own one. and. Uh, we know they're a great team, so it's a, it's a great opportunity to play them in this tournament. Reese Graham, SMU Daily Campus again. You, you, are, you guys are part of the senior class that has really been instrumental in the turnaround of this program. You are in the tournament two years ago, got out in the first round after a heartbreaking call, controversial call in the final seconds. What would a win or possibly multiple wins in this tournament mean to you guys going out as seniors? Ben, lead us off, please. Uh, I mean, it would mean everything because, you know, that's what we're trying to build is uh, winning basketball. You know, the senior classes before us, they've established a great uh, program. You know, the coaching staff has done a great job. So we're just trying to build on that and keep it moving. I mean, like you said, you know, it would mean a lot to us. You know, this is what we came here to do. Um, we came up short a few times, but you just have an opportunity right now. That's all we ask for. What can you guys take away from your uh, last March Madness two years ago? Um, I mean, pretty much just, you know, uh, take every possession, you know, just cherish it, you know, uh, I mean, don't take it for granted, you know, um, late in the game, we gave up, you know, a couple, couple easy baskets and, you know, turned the ball over, you know, just, uh, we got to take care of the ball every possession. Uh, yeah, valuing every possession is, is a key, you know, uh, staying composed throughout the game is a big key. So, uh, you know, I think we're ready for that. And I, I think we're just looking forward to playing tomorrow. Before you, if we already asked that question, one second. Uh, ben, could you put that bottle on the floor, please? Oh, yeah, my fault. Okay, go. Thank you. 
So uh, last night in the Southern Cal Providence game, I believe Southern Cal came back from a deficit of 17 points. It was either 17 or 18. Um, you guys have been one of the de best defensive teams in the conference in all of the nation per defensive efficiency. So are you concerned about their ability to you know, get hot quick and make a run on you, especially after what happened in the American quarterfinals against East Carolina? Sterling? Um, no, nah, I don't think we're concerned at all. I mean, we just, you know, stick to our game plan, stick to our principles, and, you know, we should be fine. I mean, that's March Madness. Teams make runs. We just got to withstand them. Uh, like Stero said, we're not really concerned. We're looking forward to accepting the challenge of a great offensive team. Anything else for the student athletes of SMU? All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. You are dismissed, and best of luck tomorrow.
How do our yeah. guys do? Great. Oh, yeah. Good. Doing fine. Head coach of SMU is here, Tim Jankovic. We're going to ask him to start off with a statement about his team, about being here in Tulsa, and then we'll go to questions. Tim? Okay, the statement. Um, really excited to be here. So happy that uh, we were lucky enough to, to uh, get a venue that was really close by so our fans could get here. But even more excited for our players, the opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament again. And and uh, you know, after some of the heartache from last year, so unbelievably excited to be here. Start right here. Uh, Tim, can you talk about what Shake Milton has meant to your team and what it's like to have an opportunity for him to come back and play here uh, in front of his hometown people? Yeah, I was asking him about that. Is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? And he's like, it's a great thing. So he's excited. He always seems to play here, uh, play really well, and I hope that holds. He's uh, Oh, he's a great player. He's, he's a great person. Last year, uh, you, you could argue that we had to play him out of position. He played high, he, he loves to play point guard, even though he doesn't look like one. And uh, we played him off the ball a lot. Of course, he's such a darn good shooter and good scorer. You can do that, but we had Nick Moore, and, and uh, so he didn't have the ball in his hands. And people thought, well, you know, we'll have no one that could play the point this year, of course, and he's just been amazing. Look at his. Well, his numbers are great, but, but it always goes way beyond the numbers. Uh, it goes into winning plays, IQ, toughness, you know, teammate, all those kind of things. And he's, he's an A-plus in every one. We, we love him. Reese Graham, SMU, The Daily Campus. Hey, Coach, playing, having played Southern Cal earlier this season, do you find that this opponent is going to bring an extra sense of motivation to your team? Or like in the conference tournament, does the opponent really not matter to your players? Yeah, I doubt. I doubt uh, something that happened in November is probably uh, the, the biggest deal. You know, this is the NCAA tournament, and that alone, that's enough motivation no matter who you play. Um, I'd like to think that, well, I know we are a completely different team than we were then. We didn't even play the same. But at the same time, they're a much better team. I mean, they're very well coached, and that's kind of the idea of coaching. You start out in November with the idea of making sure you're getting better, and they certainly have. So I, I think that is more just a coincidence. I don't think it'll have a bearing at all on the, on the outcome. Right down here. Hi, Coach Janine Edwards, ESPN. Your thoughts watching the USC game last night and the differences from the first half to the second half? My thoughts are I wish they would play two halves like their first half. That's, that's kind of what I'm hoping. I like their team way better in the first half, and I recommend they stay with that plan. They are uh, incredibly explosive, and I was saying at halftime when everyone – I shouldn't say everyone, but I still felt like I've seen them play enough. I've seen the records of when they're behind. I've saw them come back on Arizona from – I don't know how many points back. Uh, it's it's you better get way away from them. So not surprising. They're they're so explosive, so many weapons, um, so many ways they can score. Um, and I thought they had an incredible second half performance. Coach, you've been playing against the zone all year. A lot of teams like to play zone defense on you. They like to play that as well. They like rotating a lot, especially. What challenges th does that bring their rotation in the zone? You know what, uh, the zone, uh, we had a favor done to us. Didn't feel like a favor, but uh, early in the year, and if I'm not mistaken, it was our second game of the year in our MTE, we, uh, we drew Eastern Michigan, who, who basically runs the Syracuse zone. And because of the fear of that, we spent an inordinate amount of time way back making sure that we were going to be advanced in zone offense, because just, just for that game. And, and uh, also, uh, as time has gone on, knowing that we're a little bit of an awkward matchup for some people, we knew the first, the first answer to bad matchups is to go zone. So we've spent a lot of time, as much time, more time than I've ever as a coach spent trying to be equal zone and man, knowing that the kind of team we are is going gonna, is gonna, to you know, have people going back and forth. So, so we're ready for both. I honestly don't prefer one over the other. I've seen games where we're 
tremendous against both. I've seen games where we're not so good against either one, um, but I don't think it. Uh, I don't think that will matter. I think m what will matter the most is just our mindset, our confidence, and our comfort level. Stay there. Yeah. Um, you, you talked a little bit about the uniqueness of your team, the, the unique matchups that SMU presents. What advantage do you think that has uh, against teams in a tournament of this magnitude? Yeah, this, is, this has been the most unique team I've ever coached in all my years, either as an assistant or a head coach. Because of that, you know, most every single team I've ever been around has been pretty traditional. You got your big guys, you got your you got your point guards, and you got your wings, and you just you know you kind of go from there. And that's just kind of our game these days. Um, this team is so fun because we we really we don't have. I mean, we don't have positions. I think they're five guards. We just got five guards on the floor, and uh, it allows us to try to uh, get out of the box and not play traditionally and make people play out of their box. I think that's the biggest thing out of their normal things that they work on, hopefully we're, we're taking some people out of their comfort zones to guard us. And um, it, it has worked well for us. It doesn't always work. Certainly we, you know, we have some, some challenges because of the way we are, but we, we hope that we have more positives because of, of our difficulty to match than, than we do the negatives. Right behind you. Tim, it's Gary Bedore at the KC Star. Uh, some of your friends are here from Kansas, Bill Self and everybody. Will you have a chance to get with them at all or to run into them, talk to them? I'm, I'm, I'm glad I have friends. I'm, I'm glad I have friends in Kansas. That's really good to know. Some, sometimes I, you know, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, well, we've been, we've been texting. I don't know if we're going to get together for dinner. We're a little bit, little bit busy, but uh, we definitely have been. I, I'm, I'm excited that. Kansas is here because I do hope that uh, you know run into a lot of people haven't haven't been back in a while, um, so it's a, a little extra exciting for me that they're here. Anything else for the head coach of the Mustangs? Okay, Tim. Thank you. Best thank of you. luck. Thank you. Kansas student-athletes will be next at 345.